What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is Supergirl Season 5, Episode 4, In Plain Sight. So I want to start off with a bit of an apology, because uh, one of the things that I talked about from the last episode is this sudden power that Kelly got to see Malefic. Um, I didn't think they discussed it at all. Apparently they did. <laughs> um, I They showed it in the recap, so either it's a scene that I just don't remember, or it's a scene that they cut out and for some reason left it in the recap. I probably just missed it because, if I'm being honest, this show really bores me sometimes. So there are moments when I sort of tune out, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if I've missed several <laughs> scenes like this in the past where I'm just like, that, they didn't explain that, and then sure enough, they did. I just stopped paying attention for a minute. Um, but anyways, so apparently because of the fact that Malefic used his Inception stuff on her, um, that's what gave her the ability to see him. Um, but what's weird about that is the fact that I don't think anybody else is getting this power. It just seems to be her for some reason. So that seems still very weird, but whatever. It's probably won't be explained why she's the only one that gets it. They just wanted to have a reason for Kelly to still be involved. Um, but as far as this episode goes, I mean, it's all really dumb. First of all, William, like I said, as much as he and Carl were bickering earlier this season... They're setting them up for romance because not only is he actually not a jerk, as we saw, because he was working at the, you know, the homeless shelter or whatever, feeding food to people that are less fortunate. We find out that apparently this whole jerk act, whole shtick. All of this is being done because he wants to keep people alive because apparently Andrea, whatever her name is, is, I guess, connected to some conspiracy to kill people involved with her business. And he's working to try to make sure that doesn't happen. And on top of that, you guys ready for this? You ready for this? Are you sitting down? Because you should probably be sitting down. Because, oh boy, you're going to be so excited. You just can't help but fall down in excitement. He doesn't have a wife. <laughs> that means he and Kara can end up together. <sighs> As soon as Nia said that, his, his marriage to the lawyer is a fake. That's just a fake picture. I'm just like, oh, is it? You're telling me that he and Kara can have a romance now and it'll be okay? Because that's the only reason why he, he has a fake marriage. Like, there's no reason why he has a fake marriage other than to make us think he's unavailable for Kara. Even though they're constantly bickering... Because as we know, that equals romance in the CW. They're constantly bickering. They're setting him up for romance, but he has a wife, so what are they going to do? <gasps> She's fake. So that already is just... I don't, I don't even know. Like, finding out that apparently he's undercover, you know, sucking up to Andrea so that way he can take her down because apparently she's the one behind all of these attacks... Even finding that out, I'm still not interested in his character because it's so obvious what they're trying to do with him. You know, and even at that scene at the end where he's like, I couldn't tell you how I really felt about your writing. I'm just like, oh, you couldn't? Let me guess, you really, really like it? Sure enough, oh, you've got heart. I I just write pieces. You actually have something deeper. I'm just like, okay, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. Just keep... Throwing that little, ooh, ooh, he's saying all this stuff about me, ooh, <laughs> just shut up. <sighs> Nia and Brainy, they're going through their relationship debacle again, because Brainy just, he's struggling to figure out, oh my goodness, I, I don't understand, I was, I was putting all of this effort into the relationship and she doesn't like that, so what do I do now? And Nobody cares. <laughs> Some people probably care, but nobody really cares. This is just a side story, and it's taking up time that I don't want to have to deal with. You know, we're, at the beginning of this episode, Alex is freaking out because, of course, Kelly's in danger. If you don't stop Malefic, Kelly's in danger. What am I going to do? I'm going to get this, this Martian weapon that can kill Malefic because I need to make sure he doesn't hurt my Kelly. So I'm going to do something that could possibly bring harm to Jean Jean's because of my Kelly. That's a real good thinker. That's that's how you know you have a leadership potential whenever to protect somebody that you care about, which honestly she's only been dating her for a few weeks anyway, so is it really love? No. But you're willing to, to keep them safe. You're willing to put other people in harm's way. That's how you know you're a leader. Needs of the, needs of the many? No, no, no. The needs of the few. 
outweigh the needs of the many. That's that's leadership potential right there. <laughs> I'm honestly shocked Jean doesn't like look at this and say, Why did I put you in charge again? <laughs> this is a dumb decision. You're supposed to be smarter than this, Alex. But it's because she's in love after three weeks. Actually, they still haven't really said how many weeks they were dating, but I'm pretty sure it was probably less than a month by now. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, the whole story with Malefic in this one, I mean, he's... Essentially, he's just super powerful somehow. They don't ever really talk about how he's this power powerful, but essentially he's more powerful than these psychic inhibitors, and they've got the Phantom Zone thing that they use, and he can phase through it even though he shouldn't be able to. Don't know how that works, but <laughs> then he's able to, like, incept somebody in the DEO so that way he can get past all the anti-Martian, um, which... It's funny that they say that. It's like, oh, we've got all these precautions in place for anti-Martian protocol or whatever. And John's walking through all no problem. Like, wait a minute. Are you able to program it so it doesn't attack him or doesn't... What? The... <laughs> but, yeah, he, he manages to take control of one DEO agent and then control of Alex and essentially get them so they can use this weapon against John Johns, which it doesn't kill him, of course. Just, I guess, severely injures him somehow. I don't really know how. Um... And then all of a sudden, like, Alex is wearing this vest that has a bomb t strapped to it. And I'm just like, okay, when did that happen? And then all of a sudden, like, <laughs> even though Kelly and James were hundreds of miles away, like, it took them, I don't know, like, a whole day to travel. They were just like, no, Alex is in danger. We need to go back. And then they're back within, like, 30 minutes. Don't know how that happened, but they show up at the theater without any sort of knowledge of how they knew to show up there. <laughs> Um, and really for no reason other than Kelly since she, she was in danger and James was only there to like kick two people. Other than that, they contributed nothing. So good that they came back for absolutely no reason. <laughs> and then apparently, I guess Lena configured the warp zone thing to send Malefic to her lab somehow. And she already has in place technology that can keep him from phasing, even though the only Martian she's dealt with is Jean Jean's. And he is, Malefic is more powerful and uh, like he's able to phase more, th phase through more than John John's can. So how did you know what setting to put your wall or whatever to, to make sure he couldn't get through? None of this makes any sense, but it moves the plot forward. So whatever. And then on top of that, James decides he's going to go back to this town. I guess it's, I think it's his hometown. Um, and he just decides he's going to go back because crime is really high. And he's like, I need to go do something about this. And so he's you know, buying the newspaper there. And essentially he's going to come out against the crime. And I don't know. Does this mean he's off the show? Were they trying to like start his own little series? His, like a mini series about him being Guardian. But also trying to take out crime in this town. Or are we really going to take time away from our plot. So we can go visit James in the small town. And see how he's doing. I'm willing to bet that that second one is probably true, but we'll see what they decide to do with it. Um, but yeah, just, I mean, overall, not exciting, not fun, dumb stuff, stuff that doesn't make any sense, and you're just kind of sitting there going, wait a minute, how did, how did you, what? <laughs> how, how did they know to come back? How did they know where to be? How did they get back in that amount of time? All these questions will not be answered. They just, it happens. This is how it works. <sighs> so, with all that being said, on to the next episode. See you there. And now, episode 5, Dangerous Liaisons. Now, if you're like me, you probably went, wait a minute, haven't I heard that episode title before? And not just from any show. Like, sure, some shows are probably going to share episode titles every now and then, because it happens. You know, you're going to have some crossover. But from a CW show specifically. And sure enough... I can't remember exactly what season it was now, but Arrow, there was an episode called Dangerous Liaisons. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> we just stealing other episode titles now? I mean, you've already stolen enough from Marvel. You've stolen Spider-Gwen, then you stole um, the I Looked Into the Future storyline, and then you stole the snap and people disappearing through dust, and now you've stolen Doc Ock, so of course now you're going to start stealing episode titles from other shows in your same universe. <laughs> oh, God. 
But yeah, this is more stupidity. Um, so apparently we're not following Jimmy, which thank goodness, honestly, if we started taking time, we still might go and be like, oh, what's going on with Jimmy, guys? We probably will still do that. Um, but we didn't do it in this episode, thankfully. We kept the focus here. It was one good thing. Um, and I will say there was actually one scene that did make me laugh, and it was when uh, Andrea came down to talk to William. She's like, why aren't you at the launch? And then he, like, confronts her about everything that he's he's found to do with his friend, uh, to do with Russell, you know, all of this stuff. And uh, she's like, what, what are you talking about? And then all of a sudden you hear Russell, or not Russell, William, and then you realize it's a simulation that he's doing with the, the lenses on. <laughs> I don't know, something about that cut. It was very it was very clever the way that it cut, because he like, takes it off and he smiles. He's like, oh, things are going great. <laughs> so... It was actually a, a well-done scene in this episode, but everything else was pretty much crap. Um, first of all, talk about Lena for a second, because, I don't know, like, just continuing to go down this dark path. Um, and while I will admit I am slightly interested to see what's going to become of her, the fact that she compares her betrayal, you know, Kara betraying her, to Jean's betrayal of Ma Malefic is almost a little insulting to Malefic because on the one hand his brother erased him from the memory of him and his father like himself and his father like that's a pretty big betrayal especially when it's considered the biggest sin on Mars you know like that is that is huge to do that and basically forget your brother ever existed just because you felt like your father and yourself you couldn't handle the pain of it anymore. And, you know, all of the the awful stuff you did to him as a kid, you couldn't handle that pain, the guilt, the blame. You couldn't handle that, so you just said, you know what's going to be easier if we just forget to even exist. That's kind of a huge deal. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. And Lena is comparing that to, oh, my best friend wouldn't tell me her secret identity. Which is most of the time what superheroes do. They don't tell others their secret identity. But she didn't tell me. I've been betrayed. <laughs> There's no comparison. So as much as I'm interested to see what Lena's story is going to be. That comparison right there kind of put me off of it. Because I'm just like no. Now your, your comparison to that betrayal makes you look pathetic and petty and childish. Because all your friend did, like, yes, she lied to you, she kept secrets from you, but it was for a good reason. You know, you're the, you're the sister of her cousin's arch nemesis. You know, that's kind of a big deal, and because of how much your brother has, like, betrayed people and gone down this dark path, like, she didn't want to put you in that position to know that information. Like, there was a reason behind it, and even if you didn't understand it, there's still a good reason. That some people will look at and say, you know what, I kind of get why she didn't do it. There's no reason why Jean should have said, oh yes, we're, we're going to forget my brother even exists. Like, that's extreme. So, yeah, I I really didn't like that scene because it just made Lena look so petty <laughs> in comparison. Um, and then everything to do with, you know, looking into this rip roar or whatever. Um, I mean, <laughs> did was anybody shocked? <laughs> Was anybody shocked that it turned out to be Russell? I mean, let's be honest. Because first of all, he's like, yeah, this guy killed him. And then they show the clip of him talking to his friend. I'm like, oh, that's, that's Rip Roar. Like, you can tell by the lower half of his jaw, that's Rip Roar. And then sure enough, he shows up at his house, doesn't even find a body, just Rip Roar is there. He's like, yeah, Rip Roar killed him. Oh. <laughs> uh. No, I. You killed my Russell! No, William. I am your Russell. <laughs> That's all that I could think about! Because, duh! <laughs> duh, he's Russell! My god, you didn't find a body. You found a guy there who has a very similar lower half of the jaw if you were paying attention. Like. <sighs> oh my god! So we gotta deal with this whole thing of like, oh. John went to his house and he's like, ah, oh, yes, I, I looked into it with my psychic abilities and I sensed a struggle, but nothing else. I'm just like, oh, so you're saying he's still alive? 
Whoa, that's huge information that I didn't know about before. <laughs> so then apparently this Leviathan or whatever it is, like causes a tidal wave and is trying to flood the world for some reason. I don't know why. They're evil, I guess. They just, I, I don't know. Apparently Andre is connected to them. She's not the mastermind, but she is connected somehow. Um, and they wanted to flood the world, but they didn't. And they've been the one employing all of these assassins and stuff. I don't know. I do not know. <laughs> but, yep. I mean, it's just, it's another stupid episode. Uh, Kelly going through her little, I guess, crisis or whatever. She's like, I lost my fiance and now I could lose Alex on the front lines. I just don't know if I can deal with it. I'm just like, why are we spending time with this? Why are we doing this? Who cares? I mean, literally, you've been dating for a month. Like, the, apparently, this was their date anniversary. This was the month since they started dating. So they've been dating for a month. And you're telling me that she's, like, flipping out. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes you can care about somebody a lot after knowing them for about a month. But on the same level of your fiancé... I'm going to call bullshit. <sighs> and then the only other thing, I already kind of referenced it, but yeah, I mean, Rip Roar is basically Doc Ock. I mean, sure, he doesn't have eight appendages. He only has six, but I mean, the tentacles are Doc Ock arms. <laughs> Let's just be honest. That's what they're ripping off. They're not ripping off the, the Raimi Spider-Man. They're ripping off the PS4 Spider-Man game. Like, the Doc Ock arms and tentacles basically the same thing that they're showing here. We're just supposed to ignore that. And I cannot ignore that. <laughs> it's very obvious all of the similarities that they're just, oh, let's just rip off from that and rip off from that and rip off from that. Is that why he's called Rip Roar? Because he's a rip off of a roaring good time on the PS4? I don't know. Rip Roar is a dumb name in general. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. <sighs> on to number three. And now, episode six, Confidence Women. So is that just a poorly worded title, or is there something that I'm missing? Because it would make more sense if it was titled Confident Women, not Confidence Women. So I don't know if that's just like a typo on Netflix, or if the episode was actually titled that, it was just a terrible decision. Oh, excuse me. Or if it was just, again, something that... It's supposed to make sense on some level. I don't know why, but... Um, as far as this episode goes, though, it actually is a bit better. And it's mainly because the focus is actually back on the main plot now. And Leviathan and this whole or evil organization and all of that. And because of that, actually pretty enjoyable. Like, I, I've been curious about who Leviathan is, what their plans are. Um, and we still don't really know exactly what their plans are yet. Like, clearly they're... They're trying to do something with all of these assassinations. Like, there's a goal in mind, but we don't really have a sense of what that's supposed to be. Um, but it's very ironic, though, because the two worst shows right now are, of course, Batwoman and Supergirl out of the four <laughs> CW shows. Um, so it's, it's ironic, though, in the fact that where Batwoman, it feels like they really gave way too much information way too early on. Like, in the very first or second episode, I think it was the first episode, we learned that apparently this, you know, this creepy, evil Alice person is actually supposed to be Beth, the main character's long-lost sister. It's like, holy crap, that's crazy. In the first episode, you already revealed that. What? <laughs> and I do remember, I think it was in the first season of Supergirl, they did the exact same thing. They, like, revealed it was her aunt that was the bad guy in the very first episode. And it could have been a very interesting twist. I'm not saying it would have made it much better in either Batwoman or... Supergirl season one's, like, as far as that mistake is concerned, I don't think that changing that would have changed much overall, but it would have at least fixed that problem. Here, it's more like they're taking too long to get to what's going on, <laughs> you know? They're not revealing anything to us, they're just spending a bunch of time moseying around, kind of talking more about, again, relationships and stuff like that, rather than actually getting to what the main plot is. So now in episode six, we finally have, here's your big bad corporation, 
here's what they're doing. We still don't know why they're doing it, but here's what they're doing. And it, I'm just like, well, good, finally, we're here. <laughs> I wish we could have gotten here sooner, because this is actually more enjoyable. Because, um, yeah, Andrea's plight and what she's going through, I actually kind of like it. It's a good story. They're telling it well. Um, honestly, even Andrea and Lena's relationship, like, that whole thing makes much more sense to me why Lena's pissed rather than why Lena's pissed at Kara. You know, because whenever she made that comparison, you know, to Jean's brother in the last episode, I talked about how petty that is. It's like, oh, your best friend didn't tell you her secret identity, which is very normal. I Maybe she was talking more about this, where Andrea knew how important this medallion was, and unfortunately, you know, she got threatened to do this, so it's not like it's entirely her fault, but we know how much that medallion meant to Lena. She felt like it was the one thing that would keep Lex on going on a murdering rampage. And her best friend stole it and didn't tell her about it. And of course she didn't know why, and now she does, and I guess she's been pushed so far down this path that she just doesn't care if there's a good reason for it. Um, but I, I understand Lena's plight more now that I've learned about this story, rather than... Assuming it all stemmed from, oh, well, Kara didn't tell her that she was Supergirl. That's why she's mad, and that's why she's turning into this dark person. <laughs> um, but yeah, so just overall, though, this story was much more interesting. You know, seeing what Andre Andrea had to go through, um, seeing how their friendship, you know, really meant a lot to both of them because they both had different issues you know with Lena it was more her parents just aren't there because her mom died and her dad I don't really know much about her dad um whereas Andrea her parents are just more like focused on business side of things so they're not around I will say that it was a little weird she's just like hey are you Lena like the very first day <laughs> that they're at, at college together um it just seemed very like sudden and out of nowhere but maybe she looked into her or something because she heard that there was somebody else like her that didn't have parents that were coming to um like the first day but, yeah, seeing them as friends was, it was nice, it was sweet. Um, <laughs> I did laugh a little bit when she was like, I want to live like Rose. Like, what, you want to leave your boyfriend freezing in a, in a <laughs> ocean when you could easily scoot over and save his life? You'd rather just let him drown and freeze to death? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> uh, we all know she could have moved over on that door. Like, there was clearly plenty of room. We've People know this, you know, even if you don't think you know, you know, you know, you're just, you're denying yourself the truth. Um, but you know, that whole, that whole thing, that theme that sort of, I guess, perpetrated its way throughout their friendship, the idea of you jump, I jump, that, that feeling, I mean, it, it was a nice friendship and I think they did a really good job of building that up. So yeah, overall, I think this was the first really good good thing that I've seen this season and the fact that Andrea has powers I mean it is what it is you know this Leviathan group apparently knew about it somehow the medallion is what activates it somehow I don't get that um it seems very odd I thought the medallion itself is what gave her the powers but apparently when Lena looks at it like there's no it doesn't give her any powers or anything that there's nothing special about the medallion itself so i don't really understand how that works how it was specifically tied to andrea even though it's coming from like this aztec <laughs> um empire you know all these years ago they had this medallion that was going to one day be used by this one woman to activate these shadowy powers that she has <laughs> of course um <clears throat> but as far as her powers are concerned i mean they're pretty cool. I do think they're a little dumb, though, just because it's, it is kind of, why can't she just win <laughs> just instantly? You know, she could just sneak in and out of shadows all the time. Um, it seems pretty OP to me. There was definitely a moment where Supergirl, like, blew her away with her breath, and then she just sort of was gone. She's like, I'm done. So I don't really know why <laughs> she did that. Um, and then, of course, at the end, like, Supergirl shows up, and instead of closing the door back after she presses the button to open it she like turns to look at Andrea and then the door opens and then she turns to look at Russell and then doesn't do anything about it doesn't try to put him back in doesn't try to do anything and they like 
turns off the light, which I guess maybe her powers only work in the dark, like she can only disappear in the dark type of thing. Um, so maybe that's why she decided to leave, because the lights were coming back on. I don't know. They didn't really res explain a whole lot of that. But with that in mind, though, Lena and Kara both know about Leviathan, so it really does feel like it's sort of leading to the point of we're going after Leviathan, we're going to try to be taking them down soon, and we're finally going to start focusing on that part of the story, which is the main plot. Um, so that's why, for me, this episode is the best one so far, just because we're getting more focus. <laughs> we're, we're not you know, going back and forth and like, oh, well, let's talk about this now, and let's talk about this now, and guys, don't you want to know who's going to end up with who? Um, a little sad to see Russell die, though. I, I felt like that was kind of a a weird moment to kill him, Could just, I, I don't know. I, I get the fact that it's because Andrea was trying to leave the organization, so of course kill the man she loves to punish her for it, so I get why they did it, but as far as Russell's story is concerned, I felt like he had more story to tell. <laughs> So the fact that they just decided to kill him off was a little weird. Um, but yeah, overall, better episode. The first good one this season. Hmm. I'm not I'm not under any sort of disillusion that this is going to be the sign that things are getting better. I know that this is probably just for this episode. Like, they're probably going to go right back to shit in the next one. I've accepted that. It's fine. I've taken a lot of medicine for my head. So we're good. We're good. We're good. So with that being said, that's it for me. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on these three episodes? Let me know what we can talk about and discuss. All that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe to future Supergirl reviews. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Peace out.